Bucephalus Research Partnership, exposing creative accounting at the world's largest listed companies. Hello, it's Robert Med from Bucephalus Research Partnership. Today I want to talk about one of the world's largest industrial groups, the steel company ThyssenKrupp based in Germany. Since February 2015 their share price has nearly doubled, largely because of the resolution of their problems in Brazil, because of the growth in their elevator business and the hope that they're going to exit the steel business in Europe. Now, before we get into any specifics, I want to be quite clear. The conversation we're having today is not about us making a recommendation to buy or sell or trade in the company's securities. In our report, we go into a lot of detail about ThyssenKrupp, detailing what we think, what we think about its operations, what we think about its accounting and its valuations. But in this video, I'm just going to focus on four points. The first of which is to look at the deal which resolved their problems in Brazil. The purchase from Vale of 27% stake in CSA, and then the sale this year of 100% of the business. It was reported as being sold for 1.5 billion euros, despite the fact they bought their 27% for what was described as a symbolic sum. That sounds like quite a good purchase and a sale, except we think they neglected to mention that they injected 2.8 billion euros of capital in between the two transactions. The next thing we want to focus on is their intriguing financing arrangements. Superficially, it looks fairly normal. The company pays around 5% average interest cost using a simple interest paid over average debt ratio. However, a bit of a closer investigation reveals that most of its debt is bonds and on those they paid about 3.6% last year. Of the rest, it's largely short-term debt on which they pay around 3.25%. So what happened to all that missing interest payments? We don't know, but assuming it's short-term debt, possibly influenced by them manipulating their working capital, that would suggest that their day-to-day -day debt levels are about 3 billion euros more than they appear to be in the annual report. Even stranger, they appear to be receiving and paying close to a billion dollars in other finance costs, which are completely unexplained. Now, this results in an ongoing annual loss of about 100 million euros. We were completely bemused, couldn't understand what it was. The only thing we can think is that it's a lease portfolio that somehow is off balance sheet, but the receipts and the payments have to be disclosed. Our concern is that this is a subsidised interest cost to support sales. In other words, a sales discount is being moved out of EBIT into interest costs. The next thing we want to look at is their asset valuations. We've looked at all the transactions since 2011 and when we add them all up, there's nearly always an impairment charge and on average it would appear to be around 30%. This would seem to suggest to us they are systematically under-depreciating their assets. Of course, this has the advantage of shifting an annual cost, therefore inflating EBIT, and coming up with a miraculous one-off adjustment every time an asset's been sold. The last thing we'd like to bring your attention to is Tissons margins. Despite their attempts at diversification, these remain far below not only its steel peers, but also its elevator peers and its component technology peers. This is one of the reasons why the company doesn't seem to be actually generating that much cash and why leverage has risen so much. Our concern is that management is talking about a recovery in margins, excellent, except the margins they're talking about are actually significantly higher than their competitors when you take into account that Tissons margins are quoted before head office costs. In the report, we dig into these issues in a lot more detail. We also look at the company's valuation and explain why we think the business reality is starting to diverge from the accounting fiction and the market's perception. We finally decide, is it a buy? or a sell. If you'd like to learn more, please log into our website. Alternatively, if you want to track our videos, please subscribe below.